Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I made this tie-dye t-shirt with a tulip one-step tie-dye kit. Welcome to my channel. My name is Catherine and I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if that sounds like something you're into. First, let's go over the supplies. Like all my videos, everything is linked down in the description box below. I'm going to use a 100% cotton t-shirt that I have washed, the tulip dye kit that has all the things you need in it, scissors, and synthropol, also known as dyer's detergent. So I'm going to be using the bubblegum pink, magenta, fuchsia, blue, turquoise, and black from the tulip kit. Normally I work with more dyes from Dharma Trading or ProChem or MX, and I just want to talk a little bit about these tulip dyes. They are not as strong as those other dyes I mentioned, but they're pretty good, especially if you're a beginner and you're just getting started with tie-dye. This kit comes with everything you need and it's super easy to find and affordable. So let's start to mix up the dyes. I've already mixed up my purple, blue, and black, but let's mix up these other ones. So the kit comes with these squeeze bottles with the dye in the bottom and all you have to do is add water. The instructions say to fill the bottle completely with water, so that's about eight ounces, but I like to fill them about halfway full with water, so that kind of makes it a little bit stronger. That way the dye is a little bit more vibrant, just like a Dharma trading or um, a Jacquard dye. This kit does not come with extra soda ash. The soda ash comes in the bottles. So a lot of the other dyes, you have to use a soda ash soak, which is an extra step. So these are just one step, which is really easy. If you want a more pastel color, you can just fill it up all the way by all means. I know on Instagram and Pinterest, there is a lot of pastel -y type of tie dye. I see that really is trending so by all means if you want it to be more pastel fill it all the way up so just decide what you want for desired results and mix in the desired amount of water and shake it all up like i said i'm using about half of the amount of water that it recommends in the instructions so here they are all mixed up all of the powder is completely dissolved and i'm ready to fold all right, so let's get started with the folding. I'm gonna try to smooth out my t-shirt as much as possible, and this has been pre-washed so that all of the sizing is off from the factory. And I'm going to start to fold it hamburger style, and then I'm going to make a long, skinny triangle like this, almost like a paper airplane, and I'm going to accordion fold the top half of the shirt into this paper airplane shape and I'm just kind of making it as smooth as I can as I go. As I get to the sleeve I'm just going to continue to fold it along the established triangle that I have as if it were an entire big piece of fabric. Now I'm going to do the lower half of the t-shirt the same way I'm just accordion folding it one forward and one backward to make sure I get a even distribution of dye. And with the bottom part of the t-shirt, I'm just going to also make it follow that triangle. So once I get the triangles all folded, I'm gonna to start to put my rubber bands on. I'm putting rubber bands about every inch and a half. And I like to start at the thickest part. I'm going to continue to put rubber bands around the entire thing and you can adjust rubber bands to be more evenly spaced once everything is completely tied up. I want to also let you guys know that if you're interested in more dyeing techniques and inspiration, I have many, many dyeing tutorials on my channel, so I recommend you check them out. So the next step is to apply the dye. Before I do that, I want to make sure that my t-shirt is wet. I don't want it to be too wet, but I want to make sure that it has some moisture. So I'm going to wring it out after I dunk it in some water. And I have my drop cloth set up. 
the dye is pretty powerful and it will get on your table or your clothes um, and stain if you are not careful. So make sure to use a drop cloth and your gloves. I'm using a different set of gloves because I don't like the gloves in the kit, but you can use the gloves in the kit. I'm coming in with the bubblegum pink color first, and you can see I'm putting the dye on both sides of the shirt um, where the rubber bands are. So the rubber bands are going to provide the resist, so that's going to stay white, and I want to have color on both sides of the rubber band. So next to the bubblegum pink, I put the magenta color and I'm going in with some blue and purple and I'm making sure to do both sides, the front and the back. And I'm just doing a few drops here and there. I don't want it to be super duper saturated um, so that it's like running off onto the table, but I do want the shirt to soak up the dye. So I just take my time and I go slow. I'm coming in with some more pink and some more purple and you can kind of play around with the different colors. I'm putting the colors that are next to each other or closest to each other on the color wheel together. So I'm doing pink in the middle and purple and then out to the blue. That way it will be kind of a nice ombre effect and I'm adding a little bit more blue and I'm just making sure to not get blue on the light pink parts so I want to make sure that I'm wiping up any excess dye that I have on my table just to make sure that I keep the whole thing as intended. Now I'm coming on top of all of this with some black this seems like a little scary, like it's going to completely cover up all your tie dye. But if you get the dye into all the nooks and crannies before you add the black, it'll be fine. So the black is just going on the outside part. So I'm turning it over and putting black on the whole thing. I think that the adding the black kind of gives it a little bit more of like a grown-up sophisticated look and it will tie together all of the pinks and purples and blues really nicely. So again, I'm just going to wipe it all up, wipe off my hands, just being very careful not to get dye all over me. And then I'm going to use my cling wrap. I want to get the whole thing covered in plastic so that it stays wet and I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours so that the dye can batch and it can really get into those fibers. So I just want to make sure I wrap the whole thing up and I'm going to double wrap it just so it's not um, covered in dye and then I'm going to just put it in a little spiral here and put some more cling wrap on top of that too. There it is. It's ready to batch for 24 hours. Let's see what it looks like tomorrow. All right. Good morning, everybody. Now it's time to open up our tie dye. I'm so excited to see how it turned out. So let's open it. Here it is. I'm going to fix my camera. Here we go. So the reveal is always the most exciting part of any tie-dye project and I actually saved these gloves um, overnight so you can do that to reduce waste in your projects. They are really easy to reuse so that's why I like these gloves. Oh wow! Nice! Ooh, time to rinse. I took it directly to the sink to rinse with cold water because I didn't want the dark dyes getting onto the lighter parts or um, the white part to become dyed by like a bleeding effect. So I'm just rinsing it with cold water, just agitating it nonstop until the water runs clear. So once it ran clear, I 
then changed to hot water and I'm using Synthropol, which is also known as Dyer's detergent. Uh, you can also use regular laundry detergent, but the Synthropol will prevent the dye from bleeding, which is why I like to use Synthropol on my tie dye. So after hand washing, I put it into the machine and I washed it on hot with more Synthropol and then I dried it on hot. Here is the final result and I think it turned out really nice. I love this color combination. And if you like this color combination, be sure to check out the other tutorial I did with a similar color combination using an Ichijame Shibori fold. It turned out really cute and I will link that down in the description below for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to follow me on my social medias at Onyx Art Studios. And if you make any of the projects on my channel, be sure to tag me. Also, I have online workshops available on my website, onyxartstudio.com. If you like this video, be sure to check out these other videos for more inspiration. Be sure to subscribe for a new video every Thursday. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.